And Sunday morning I preached the message out of Nehemiah. Some things are worth fighting for. And I did not know again that this would go into a, a second part. And um, I, I honestly, I, I, I struggled with this because I wanted to save it for a Sunday. But I knew the next two Sundays we was going to have guest ministers here. And I said, God, you know, there's. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. God, you know, it's, we're very lucky if we get at least nine, eight, nine people here on Wednesday nights. You know what? But he just wouldn't release it. Now look what he's done tonight. Amen. I think there's more than that here tonight. Amen. But um, so I want you to understand this when I'm preaching this. That I'm not chastising anybody. I'm not getting on to anyone. I'm warning us that there's still work to do. There's still work to do. Amen. And I'm going to go back to the book of Nehemiah. And we're going to read from the 6th chapter. Now I'm going to read verses 1 through 4. We're going to read in the King James Version. And then I'm going to read those same verses. And it's going to be several times in this. From the basic Bible English Version. Which will also be on the screen. But if you have your Bibles. Turn with me to Nehemiah chapter 6. And we're going to start with verse 1. It said, Now it came to pass when Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem the Arabian and the rest of our enemies heard that I had builded the wall and that there was no breach left therein. Though at the time I had not set up the doors upon the gates. That Sanballat and Geshem sent unto me saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. And I sent messengers unto them saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Everybody say, I can't come down. Amen. Why should the work cease? Whilst I leave it and come down to you? Verse 4 said, Yet they sent unto me four times after the sword. And I answered them after the same manner. You can be seated. I'm going to read verse 1 through 4 again, but I'm going to read it from the basic Bible English version, which we will see on the screen as well. Now when word was given to Sanballat and Tobiah and to Geshem the Arabian and to the rest of our haters, that I had done the building of the wall and that there was no more broken places in it, though even then I had not put up the doors in the doorways. Notice the wall was built. There was no more holes. There was no more cracks. There was no more breaches in the wall. But Nehemiah was still on the wall. Sang down and engaged him, sent to me saying, Come, let us have a meeting in one of the little towns in the lowland of Ono. But their purpose was to do me evil. And I sent men to them saying, I am doing a great work. So that it is not possible for me to come down. Is the work to be stopped while I go away from it and come down to you? And four times they sent to me in this way. And I sent them the same answer. If we would notice the context of this reading in many attempts by Nehemiah's enemies or his haters to stop him. From doing the Lord's work. But Nehemiah's dedication and service stood as a loud witness at, at what a true servant of God is to be about. Satan and his crowd are always trying to get the servants of God to come down from the wall. But I want us to understand that when we do, there are certain things that we can expect to lose. <clears throat> I hope I can get through this. There are some great and wonderful things that we walk away from when we come down from the place that God has called us to occupy. And I want to preach on this thought tonight. Stay 
on the wall. Stay on the wall. And if we don't stay on the wall, there's four or five things that I want to mention that we walk away from. And the first thing we walk away from is we walk away from the work God has called us to do. Nehemiah's call and Nehemiah's commission to work, uh, it, it was a great work. Any work that we do for the Lord is a great work. Doesn't matter what it is. Brother Brandon touched on that a couple of Wednesdays ago when he preached. And by the way, he'll be preaching next Wednesday night. Uh, you know, you, you can be picking up trash. You can park cars. You can um, just just clean it up. You can be, as he said, you can be plunging the toilets while they're out here shouting. But you're still doing the work for God. David tells us in Psalms 84 and 10 that I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wickedness. I want to tell you, church, that especially now that we are in revival, Satan will take every trick that he has in his arsenal and he will do everything he can to get you to come down. But we've got to stay on the wall. We've got to stay on the wall. James chapter 4 verse 7 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Sometimes we look at that and we like, wait a minute, where's that scripture? And I never heard of that. So he said, I know if I resist the devil, he's going to flee from me. Well, he ain't going to go nowhere if you don't first submit yourself to God. Right. All right. You've got to submit ourselves to God. And the reason we're in revival now is because we've submitted ourselves to God. And the devil has begun to flee. But I want to warn you that if we come off the wall, the devil will return and he will fight more than he ever has. We've got to stay on the wall. Yes. <laughs> he's going to fight anyway. But if you come off the wall, he's just going to take over. And just like I mentioned Sunday, the battle will be over with and he'll win. He'll win that battle. But I don't know about you, church, but I'm determined not only to lose the battle, but we're going to win the war. Yes, and we're going to stay on the wall. Yes. And we're going to fight. Second Peter chapter 3 in verse 14. Again, I'm going to read King James and then right behind it read the basic Bible English version. Verse 14, Second Peter chapter 3. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be dil diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. Same scripture, basic Bible English. For this reason, my loved ones, as you are looking for these things, take great care that when he comes, you may be in peace before him, free from sin and every evil thing. God's plan and his work. I said God's plan and his work are just too much or too great for us to come down off the wall and give attention to the devil's foolishness. We need to be on the job 24 hours a day. We can't quit. We can't come down from the wall. Because when we do, we abandon, we walk away from the work. And the second thing that we walk away from is we walk away from the truth. We walk away from the right way. It seems if, if you've never read about Nehemiah, I urge you to go and read 
And it, it, it seems that it, it was just Nehemiah, Nehemiah's way of life to give himself 100% to his work. And for Nehemiah to come down would have been to step down. It would have been as if he just turned his back on the truth. He would have turned his back on the right way. And when we step down from the Lord's work, what we're actually doing is turning away from the path of righteousness. We're turning away from the path of godliness. But God's call is for us to walk straight. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 through 27. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth, a perverse lips, and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Here it is in the basic Bible English. And keep watch over your heart with all care. So you will have life. Put away from you an evil tongue. And let false lips be far from you. Verse 25 says, keep your eyes on what is front of you. Look straight before you. Verse 26 says, keep a watch on your behavior. Oh, yes. Let all your ways be rightly ordered. Yeah. Right. Let there be no turning to the right or to the left. Keep your feet right. from evil. Yeah. Our duty before the Lord Amen. is to faithfully carry out His commands Amen. and to do His work Efficiently, yes. joyfully, and faithfully. Yes. That word efficiently there means to with maximum productivity, without wasted effort. To step down, to come down off that wall would be to compromise. Right, and we've got to hold on to that which is right. right. Even if we are standing alone when the dust settles. Amen. We've got to hold on. Amen. We can't come down because we can't walk away from the truth. We can't walk away from the right way. That's right. And the third thing we walk away from when we come down off the wall, we walk away from our witness. We walk away from our witness. Nehemiah, he held a, a place of great authority. A place of great respect among the people. And if he had come down, the work would have stopped. And perhaps it would have never been finished. All Jerusalem was watching his lead. Because in Jerusalem, Nehemiah was a leader. The people watched him and they emulated what they saw of their leader. If he would have came down from the wall, his witness would have been ruined. And not only would, and because of his witness being ruined, the people would be convinced then that there was actually a greater work than the Lord's work. In church, we need to realize that there are be that we are being watched by a growing body of younger, impressionable believers. They're watching us. Mom and Dad, they're watching to see how you live at home versus how you live when you're in church. They're watching how you talk at home versus you how you talk in front of other church members. 
They're watching you. You are their influence. And if you step down from the Lord's work, God forbid, I come down off the wall as your pastor and call somebody else the ball. You need to think the same way in front of your children and in front of your grandchildren. I've got to stay on the wall. I've got to stay on the wall. I don't want to be the reason that my child or my grandchildren stumble. Matthew chapter 18, verse 6. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Different version, basic Bible meaning says, but whosoever is a cause of trouble to one of these little ones who have faith in me, it would be better for him to have a great stone fixed to his neck and to come to his end in the deep sea. God, help us. Help us walk straight before the little ones. Help us walk straight before our children, before our grandchildren. Let them, God, when they come to me, let them know that I'm still on the wall. Let them know, God, that, yeah, I'm in revival, but I'm still on the wall. Yeah, I've seen great things happen, but I'm not coming down because there's still souls that are worth fighting for. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, God. As your pastor, I've got to stay on the wall. Not just for me, but i got to stay on the wall for you. I can't give up. We're in revival. We're having great services. But the whole time, I'm still on the wall. And I'm looking back, ready to fight at any chance I need to. And that's how we got to be. The people outside of Jerusalem were also looking. One false move and Nehemiah's credibility would have been destroyed. That's why it's important when you go to Walmart or you go to Target or you go to the supermarket or you in your workplace to stay on the wall. Don't lose your credibility of what they see in you. You don't know who's looking at you at work. You don't know who sees you in shopping. Do you want to take a chance of losing that credibility by coming off the wall? What can we do? Stay on the wall. Stay on the wall for Jesus. Stay on the wall working. Whatever it may be, stay on the wall working and keep on living for him. The next thing we walk away from when we come down off the wall, we walk away from our lost loved ones. Jerusalem was known by all. Jews and heathen alike as a place where God was worshipped. Yes. Nehemiah loved God yes. and he wanted to rebuild the, the fallen city so that, so that God could be once again worshipped and the lost could come and be converted. To have come down off the wall would have been equal to forgetting the eternal danger that our lost loved ones are in. Nehemiah said four times, I'm not coming down off the wall. But Brother Stuart, 
There's no more holes. There's no more cracks. Everything's put together. All we got to do is get down and hang up the doors. But somebody has to stay on the wall. Don't depend on somebody else to stay on the wall for your lost loved ones. Anytime that God is worshipped, anytime that God is proclaimed in truth and sincerity, souls can be saved. That's why it's important that we follow, I believe it's John 4, 24, that we worship him in spirit and in truth. All right. If we come down from our high calling, our high calling in him, yes. we have walked away from the loss and have given them over to hell. Oh, brother Storm, you mean? And I thought when I got saved, that's it. I was done. I didn't. No. You got to stay on the wall for some. You were here tonight because somebody stayed on the wall for you. You stand on the wall and showing up on Wednesday night. When the flesh says I'm tired. When the flesh says, I don't want to go to church. But you show up. Yes. Devil, I'm tired. But I'm staying on the wall. I know the tricks you try to use, devil. But I'm staying on the wall. Do I have anybody tonight that is willing to stay on the wall? And they cannot afford for us to be dimmed by the world. We need to be that bright beacon. We need to be that one that says, I'm going to hang on. I'm going to stay on the wall. In closing tonight, our duty is clear. We need to refuse to listen to the calls yes. and the challenges of the devil. Right. Amen. Stay in the battle for Jesus. Yes. Amen. And don't come down off that wall for any reason. You see, if Nehemiah would have came down, he would have been in danger. Yes. If you come down, you will be also. Your children will be in danger. All your lost loved ones will be in danger. We've got to stay on the wall and we've got to finish the task. Nehemiah and the people were involved in serious work. Jerusalem itself depended upon the completion of that work. Pentecostals of Watson were also dependent upon the completion of the task at hand. Yes. And that's all souls. In Nehemiah's day, they fought criticism. Today, we fight criticism. Yes, amen. We fight. Face it any time that we decide to do a work for God. There's going to be plenty of people there to criticize. So we decide it's really not enough. We just want to criticize ourselves. We got to protect each other. Yes. Maybe this week.
week I got to stay on the wall for Sister Frida. Or maybe this week I got to stay on the wall for Brother Brandon Phillips. We're not just staying on the wall for lost loved ones, although that is of the utmost importance. But if we don't stay on the wall for our brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but I can't fight this alone. I need each and every one of you to get on the wall and begin to fight. Your work is not to please critics and complainers. Your work is to please God. Amen. It's going to take working and preparation to fight. Amen. That means if you're on the wall, you're building the wall you're taking care of the wall. At the same time, there has to be some multitasking going on. Because just because you're on that wall, the devil's not going to leave you alone. Matter of fact, he's going to come full force. Amen. Nehemiah had, had a, a sand ballot and Geisha coming, trying to get him to come down off the wall. We don't have, we do have people coming, but most of the time, it's the spiritual battles that try to bring us off the wall. But we got to be on the wall at the same time preparing to fight when the enemy comes in like a flood. And when the enemy comes in like a flood, because we stay on the wall, that's when God will raise up a standard. It's going to take working and preparing to fight. How do I prepare? Come on. If you ain't reading this every morning and every night, you're not prepared. If you're not praying every morning and every night, you're not prepared. If you're not fasting on Tuesdays with the church, you're not prepared. It takes all that to prepare. Amen. So what happens if we get off the wall? We walk away from the work God has called us to. We walk away from the truth. Would you stand right now? We walk away from the truth. We walk away from the right way. We begin to compromise. We walk away from our witness. I don't know about you. October 8th was 20 years and I made my way back to God. 20 years. I don't know how long you've been at it, but 20 years. I worked really hard to build my witness up. Not for any accolades, but for God to see the sincerity in me. And that last thing I want to do is come down off the wall and ruin that witness that I built for 20 years with the help of God. What about the people that I've been witnessing to for five years? But I decide I'm going to come off the wall. I'll be lucky if I were ever able to win them. That's right, man. Because I ruined my witness. We can't get slack. We can't get slack in our reading and our praying and our study. We can't get slack in our going to our home church. I've said this before. We ought to be just excited to be at church on Wednesday night as we are Sunday morning. But this flesh that is enmity with God, that hates God, 
says, you don't need to go tonight. It's just Wednesday. You don't need to go tonight. Everything's just really informal. It's just, I mean, it, we're going to be out of there by 8 o'clock anyway. Why do you want to drive all the way over there? Why do you want to waste your time and go on? For you can stay home and pray for that little bit of time. Maybe that Wednesday you stayed at home. That brother or sister was here, needed you to be on the wall. Don't walk away from your witness. And the final thing is if we come down off the wall, we walk away from our lost loved ones. We've got to stay on the wall, church. I'm not trying to bust bubbles. I'm not trying to shake trees. I'm trying to warn you that we've got to stay on the wall. If we want this great revival to continue and build on this revival and see even greater things happen, we've got to stay on the wall. Because there's some things worth fighting for. Every one of us standing right now. Oh, it's Wednesday night, I know, but we need to get out of that, that, that mentality. I'm going to open these altars up. I want you to come stand. I want you to come kneel. If you need to sit on the altar, whatever you need to do, Mother Mike, you can turn that off. I want you to come. 